before we get into you know RBNS, which is what everyone is here for, um, just give a little overview about the systems and software engineering. So IBNS, uh, in the broader schemes of the Winchell PTC requirements um, and software engineering family, um, is the requirements management tool. So we're looking at, you know, defining these requirements, um, our test management systems. In addition to this, Winchell also has the Winchell modeler uh, software solution. And what this approach takes is uh, a very visual, um, so essentially model-based systems engineering approach, whereby we will map out through flowcharts, um, diagrams, um, sequences, how certain interactions between uh, you know, a parent and a child, um, how those things come about, uh, and how we might actually uh, use this to define you know, requirements, um, standard processes, uh, and things of that nature. So the product family as a whole uh, is shown in the following. So we can see where RVNS fits uh, in terms of you know, that requirements management, uh, test management, and then looking at software and pro process workflows. Um, and then Winchell Modeler will take into account, I guess, the whole systems engineering side where we're visualizing it. Um, so the ability to you know, process this uh, through you know, software design, um, code automation, and get a better understanding of our entire system um, as a whole. Okay, so let's get into Winchell RVNS and hopefully uh, give you some more insight into the tool uh, and what it can actually provide for you. So the first question is why requirements validation? So, you know, for those of you working with designs, uh, the most, I guess, technical or difficult part of that is understanding the scope, understanding what the customer actually requires in terms of a finished product. Um, anyone can really design anything, but if you aren't limiting that scope, you aren't narrowing down, uh, then it becomes quite messy and quite difficult. Um, and that's where we would essentially look at our stakeholder to define uh, our initial requirements or stakeholder requirements in the form of some sort of documentation, which then gets passed uh, throughout the supply chain. Next slide. Okay, so in terms of um, generating that initial you know, statement of works, um, the requirements for our project, uh, we look at some sort of requirements and validation tool in order to do so. And this is what RVNS uh, is essentially catered to do. It will take or allow users to essentially manage all the data pertaining to you know, information from your stakeholder, allow you to define the full set of requirements um, and allow you to then go and test that to enable you to then carry out that end-to-end -end traceability, making sure that uh, your initial or final design meets that initial requirement. Okay, so we go through this um, through a various different steps. Um, so firstly, you know, agreeing on that initial need. Uh, so what does the stakeholder require in terms of their design? Um, if it's, you know, sizing constraints, it's packaging, it's, you know, it has to achieve a certain task um, or do some sort of process. And then as part of that, we want to uh, validate that. So, you know, from quality, from a regulatory compliance point of view, we want to make sure that this is all tracked. Um, so for those of you that in, you know, specific industries that require you to have all this information at hand and ready to go, then this tool becomes invaluable. Uh, whereby you can query any sort of requirement at any point in time and see that full end-to-end -end traceability. It also makes it a lot easier for you to go in, understand, well, which parts are lacking, which parts have I fulfilled, um, and verify essentially that my final design is actually meeting those requirements. Um, I'm not going, or I'm not straying away from that initial design, um, but I'm also delivering a product uh, that fits uh, that fits its need. So the idea uh, with Winchell RVNS will be going through you know, a few different things, uh, essentially talking about how that digital thread uh, can expand upon our initial requirements and test um, the ability to scale. So regardless of if we're working with a simple project, you know, quite a, few, a handful of requirements, 
um, or something really complex, we can use the same tool um, and expand it out across multiple users and multiple documentations. Um, the ability to manage and um, I guess branch, version, track all those history and design changes. So these documents will mature as your, uh, I guess, requirements uh, get you know, bigger and better. And we wanna be able to track and see how these changes uh, have come about, all of which is possible within uh, Winchell RVNS. And then finally, uh, the ability to review, provide feedback, and then understand uh, you know, where, where things are originating from um, and making sure that the end user can then come and query and see exactly what has been achieved uh, throughout the entire design process. Okay, so um, Winchell RVNS, um, you know, core functionality. Uh, so you have two different UIs in terms of how you might want to interact with the software. So depending on your needs um, and what you're trying to do within the system, you can use either the web interface or a client-based interface, um, both of which are updating you know, live and instantaneously. So you know, any modifications that are made um, in either interface will then get propagated um, to all users. So you can imagine this is really good for those collaborative environments where you have large teams working on either the same document or multiple different documents within an overall project. Um, you can have all this information get filtered through um, and everyone's working on that, you know, that single source of truth, uh, the information's accurate and up to date in real time. You also have the ability to, you know, edit uh, as you normally would. So, you know, editing and formatting um, like you would in Excel and Word, that's all done within the software package itself. So we're not having to jump out in order to you know, restructure some of our documentation. We can format it, display it in a way that's meaningful um, and useful for all individuals. The software itself also gives you the ability to uh, essentially version um, baselining branching. So you can imagine things like uh, design reviews, um, any sort of you know, reuse and templating, um, all possible within the package and the ability to you know, provide and create traces uh, between various document domains um, and windshield. Okay, so the next thing we'll talk about is the digital thread. And the idea here is we want to expand upon, you know, just going from a requirements management system to the entire, uh, I guess, windshield environment um, from you know, PLM requirements, um, test, and then actual consumption. So this is um, a good overview of that scenario whereby we have things like requirements management over on the far left where we're talking about uh, the conceptual digital sort of state. We can look at things like um, MBSC and Winchell Modeler to essentially track, um, understand how certain projects interact with different you know, external parties, vendors, organizations. We can map those out and make sure that our requirements are actually meeting or fulfilling these needs. We can then filter and link through traces to our windshield PLM space. So instead of using a test case to validate, you know, whether or not our requirements are being fulfilled, we can use, you know, the windshield WT part, um, the physical object as a way of validating that requirement. We also have integration into a variety of different third party tools as shown below. And then we can round it up by validating, making sure that everything is, um, I guess, satisfied and fulfilled. And then going to the physical space, we can actually view this information, see our physical um, product, um, our, final, uh, our final delivery of it. Okay. So just to recap, I guess, Windchill itself um, being the, you know, the, the product umbrella, um, RVNS is one side of that. Winchell, you know, PLM is also another side of that. And then Winchell Modeler. So all of which integrate into one another and really depends on what you're trying to achieve, uh, what tools you need at your disposable. Um, and uh, just something to keep in mind uh, when you are looking into these solutions. So some of you might be managing, you know, data existingly within a PLM system such as Winchell. 
uh, you might be using Winchell RBNS as a purely standalone requirements management tool. So um, all of which will work separately, but it's good to understand that you do have the added benefits of being able to link everything, fully integrate it, and have that single source of truth across, uh, across the board. Okay, so this is just an example of um, some of those workflows or a potential workflow that you might be involved with, uh, whereby, you know, the far left, where having those requirements, uh, we have some sort of structure, hierarchy, all of which get fed, you know, downstream into our modeler. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to, you can, you know, um, skip this step, but potentially you go, you understand the use cases that you might be using it in. And then from that, we'll look at, you know, the software requirements, the mechanical side, those requirements, and satisfy or allocate through traces into our windshield uh, PLM system. We'll cover things like, you know, all the mechanical parts, the electrical components, um, any sort of software integration. We can use Modeler to simulate that um, in order to understand how that works. And then we can finally validate this whole process using Winchell RVNS, um, using test cases uh, and test sessions. So that digital product traceability essentially works off, you know, OSLC linking. Um, so we're defining those trace uh, between different systems. Uh, this enables you to essentially comply with a variety of different standards. Um, so some of which may be out of the box, some of which you can use the tool to uh, essentially configure it to suit your needs, uh, whether you are validating, uh, you're documenting, or you're documenting um, or for audit purposes. It also allows you to, you know, essentially maintain that traceability, which is a big factor of this whole tool. Uh, so the power of it is at any point in time, you want to be able to highlight specific branches, specific requirements, understand where they've been derived from um, and what they should be fulfilling. 